uh, Reg Buhari was questioning that the legislators have no business having constituency project in the budget. But the problem is that the electors have their own, I mean, the elected uh, representatives have their own difficulties back home. And so the earlier we enlighten the people to really understand what is the role of the elective, elected representatives, what is the role of the executive, so that if you are a senator or a member of the House of Reps, people should not judge your performance on the basis of how many bags of rice you come to share, how many motor vehicles, how many motorcycles you share around to assess what you are doing. If you don't do that, they think you are not performing, and therefore you shouldn't be voted back. All right, let, let's bring in Malpe. She's got a question for you. Yeah. Malpe. Well, Malam, some people listening to you this morning will assume that they are listening to a member of civil society organization. <laughs> uh, but I am one for information. I've been a trade union for governor many years. In Kano State, yeah. uh, which is one of the states that you know bring brought in a lot of votes for the current government. Yes. Even though uh, you know it's not then. I think you were a member of the APC. Yeah. Pictures of you have also circulated of you welcoming back, uh, seeming very excited about the return of your rival, former rival, uh, former Governor Kwan Kwan, who is now a senator as well, under the platform uh, of the APC, but who is, who is now defected to the PDP. First, I want to ask you about the question of impact. You've talked about poverty and the lack of education, which some people will say is one of the things that politicians like to exploit. In fact, they, some people say they prefer that the people remain poor and uneducated so that they can continue to exploit that in elections. So first and foremost, what have you done? Uh, what did you do? What are you currently doing to ensure that people are out of this poverty and have you know, better understanding of how the electoral process is supposed to work? That's one. On the other hand, in terms of impact, I, mean, I think Chamberlain asked you that question, but what impact are you looking to see as these defections happen? Because some people are saying the manner in which it is happening right now doesn't look like it's going to have the same impact it had before 2015. Do you also see that happening as 2019 approaches? Uh, those are two questions I have for you right now. Well, uh, thank you very much uh, for your observation. I think for the first part of your question, uh, in terms of uh, what contribution one made in improving the uh, quality of education or improving the ed level of education and poverty, uh, I think uh, going back to my days as the chief executive of the uh, most popular state in Kano, we did quite a lot. You see, my professor, my dear professor of, of education, Vafungwa, used to argue that it takes you one jump to fall into a ditch, and it takes you several hundreds of thousands of jumps to get out of it. When we talk of uh, enlightenment, talking about education, we did quite a lot in that respect. Uh, I don't think I have the time to reel out all what we've done, but the little I will say is that we establish as many schools as possible. We encourage the increase in number of uh, children going to school. Within my eight <laughs> years, I had established over 400 new junior secondary schools. Most of them are now senior secondary schools. I employed more than 10,000 uh, secondary school teachers and over three, 4,000 in our tertiary institution in the state. I introduced the very day I was sworn in in 2003, free education to all females at all levels. Uh, this continued for eight years. Every girl of Kano that went to school, up to university, uh, you're getting it free. All this was our effort to improve the level of education. It's a long journey, it's not a one day thing. We also empowered and funded a lot of adult education to enlighten them. We sponsored a lot of education in terms of awareness. I established uh, the Directorate of Social Reorientation, and uh, that was famous, which in Hausa we always call Adidi So is now almost a household word uh, all over. That contributed to the peace, to the understanding, to the uh, peaceful coexistence among the people since we came in eight years. There wasn't any problem of volatility in Kano, in spite of Kano being very volatile in crisis. So we've done quite a lot of this, and uh, through the society reorientation program, 
we were educating people to come out. What are you, Mala Amini Kanu used to say that, teach them to say no, enlighten them. I felt so many uh, public hearings to allow people to ask us questions. Now as to whether this defection will make a similar... Sorry to interrupt you, Malam. Just one question before you move on to defections. Yes. I mean, that was what you did while you were governor. Yeah. Right now, you are a member of the opposition party. I mean, some people will say we haven't quite heard your voice. Even in Kano, yeah. I, I, first of all, from us, I don't know if these programs which you started yeah. as governor are still continuing. And, you know, if indeed these programs, uh, you know, what you have to do or what you're currently doing to challenge... Uh, the current governor of the state, you don't have to run for governor again, but what you're currently doing to ensure that the government that is in place in Kano or even at the center yeah. is on its toes concerning some of the problems that you have enumerated no, no, here, especially as concerns see, poverty and unfor lack of Unfortunately, part of the problem in our political system these days is that most governments, when they come in, especially if it is on a different platform, they abandon virtually every program, every policy, everything about the previous government. Uh, and I think it's not helping matters. Uh, what we expect to see that even if you are coming into government on a different platform, you uh, should assess. For example, the reorientation program we introduced in Kano, it was doing very well. When the new government came, of course, from a different platform, uh, it was abandoned. They were not continuing it. A lot of the institutionalized uh, issues were abandoned. So I think we need that continuity on the basis of the goodness and appropriateness of policies, programs of various government, regardless of the political okay. parties. Pardon me, but we need to go to break. But yeah. we'll come back uh, and let him tell us what his next plan will be in a moment. Yeah. Join us again.